out-of-state investors. I don't think anybody out there is going to give it to you as real as I do. Let's take a look. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holton Wise TV. Today, I'm working with an out-of-state investor named Sasha. Now, Sasha... You have been with us for a while. We've done a lot of properties together. The particular property that I came across, I haven't sent you in a video for a while. You're kind of in a holding pattern, but I know based on what you've bought in the past that this property is something you're going to be interested in. And what you're really going to like and what everybody else is going to like, everybody else is watching this now. Of course, you guys are not, if you're not Sasha, you're not watching this live. I sent this uh, to her. Many months ago, privately, to get these videos in real time, you got to shoot my team an email, sales at holdenwise.com. Give us your number. We'll call you how you can work with us like Sasha is. I only release them publicly on Holton Wise TV for educational purposes after the deals are done, right? So you don't get to snake Sasha's deal. Uh, but I think this is going to be a really good learning experience. Really talk about what you really get. And that's what this, this whole channel that's what Holton Weiss TV is all about, right? It's about giving out-of-state investors the good, the bad, the ugly. Any asshole can get up here and try to pitch real estate to you based on price-to-rent ratios, right? But do they really talk about what the real life experience is going to be looking like as an investor? Do they talk about the trials and tribulations that you're going to have? Do they really give you a non-biased analysis of the properties or do they just try to shove those properties down your throat right so with this property the numbers right they're great they're amazing but that's not enough i want to go deeper and really talk to you about what it's going to be like so let's jump into that after this commercial break Hey lenders, are you looking to be part of our referral program? If so, send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's jump right into the property. 3433 West 50th, Cleveland, 44102. It's been on the market six days. It came on the market and then immediately went off the market. I guess the listing agent had somebody go under contract that like immediately fell apart. Now they have listed it at 115 grand, and that is a freaking gift, okay? It's not going to happen at 115K, I'll let you know, right? Because this is a quad, a fully occupied quad on the west side of Cleveland. So we're definitely going to need to spend more than 115. I think we're going to need to take this thing down at $125,000. If you buy it at $125,000, I believe you will make approximately $18,316 a year, right? You finance it. You put down 31 and a quarter, bank kicks in 93. Over the long haul, that could project to a 43.4% cash on cash return or a 15 cap because with these four units, what we would be getting is four units at 750 a piece, right? A total of $36,000 in income. Does that sound freaking amazing? Yeah, of course it does, but... That's not where this video is going to end, right? We're not just going to be like, oh, this is amazing. Bye, bye, bye. No, no, no. We got to break it down and like really understand those numbers, right? I see investors, they, they see those type of numbers and they just like, dude, they get blinders and they don't think about anything else, right? Let's talk about this in a more realistic fashion. Yes, all those numbers are achievable. Yes, that's all great. But you have to understand what you're getting with that, though, right? Here is the property. Now, as you can see, it is by no means the Ritz-Carlton, right? Like, you know, you got the fucking door. Like, the listing agent goes there to take pictures of this, and the motherfucking door is, like, ripped off the fucking building, okay? So you have to understand that, right? It's clearly low income, right? We got, like, this is... <laughs> This, this, like, right here was supposed to, it used to be a window. They just boarded the sun bitch up, right? All right, this is definitely a low-income investment, okay? Now, 
with low income investments like this, you have to understand there is going to be risks, right? To <coughs> the investment, right? Tenants don't always pay their rent on time, this or that, right? Now, the projections I just gave you, that is all four tenants at full market rent, the 750. I'm factoring in maintenance, repairs, non payment, things of that nature. But I'm assuming that we're going to get them on Section 8, right? Because this is currently, as it sits, a D grade neighborhood. However, it is my absolute favorite D grade neighborhood in the Cleveland market, right? Let me pull this up nice and big for you, okay? All right. This is the Clark Fulton neighborhood, folks, okay? Clark Fulton, bada bang. Here's the property. And this right here, this is Metro Health Hospital, okay? That's why I really love this investment. Metro Health is putting a billion dollars into that hospital and the surrounding Clark Fulton neighborhood. Billion, be like boy, right? They're doing low-income housing, increasing their, uh, their, their their infrastructure, their building, the whole thing. They're helping out the community, right? So if I'm going to go with a low-income area in Cleveland, this is the low-income area I'm going to go with, right? Currently, right now, you put people in there on Section 8. Is there going to be riffraff? Yeah, a little bit. It, it Does this building, when we get back to the inspection report, does it appear that it's got a lot of deferred maintenance? Absolutely, right? Uh, but that said, when you get Section 8, you alleviate your biggest risk with D-grade investments like this one, and that is tenants not paying rent, okay? That's number one. Number two, Cleveland is not necessarily a market where people are looking at uh, going here to this market for appreciation. We're really just a cash flow market. Obviously, with the price points and the numbers, you know, the chart, the numbers are there for cash flow. But what about appreciation, right? Typically, we don't see a lot of appreciation in Cleveland. However, if I'm going to speculate on any type of neighborhood turning around, it's going to be Clark Fulton because of that billion-dollar investment, number one. And then number two, if you just pan this off a little bit, right, go a little bit uh, further out, right, we are here, and what is here? Detroit Shoreway, Ohio City, Tremont, right? These are the areas that have gentrified, that have gone nicer. So we are bordering those, and, of course, right north of that, we got downtown, and then we got the lake, right? So we're bordering a lot of gentrified stuff. We're getting a billion dollars in there, and the numbers are so impressive that it makes sense to take on a little bit of that D-grade risk. Now, as far as it's currently constructed, right, we're not getting the 3000 in rent just yet. We are getting four tenants all paying, uh, it is four tenants all paying 550 right? So we're getting 2200 in rent, which if you run your numbers in the same way I run um, the projected numbers, it's still cash flowing from day one. Now, those tenants, uh, they want to stay is what the listing agent is saying. Of course they want to stay. They're getting a $200 discount on their house. But they're not all Section 8 tenants, right? So you have to understand that when you pick up an investment like this, you got to think about this one for the long haul. Is it possible that the first year or two of ownership of this will be a little rough? Possibly, yeah, right? If you can get all four of those tenants to stay and then pay the 3000 that's how you could end up with the 43% return, which is great. But this is real estate investing. There's an unlimited amount of variables at all times. Can I guarantee that that happens? No. Do I know exactly how many tenants are going to turn over? No, I don't, right? Uh, that's a risk you're going to have to take. High risk, high return, high reward, right? What I would recommend doing is going in, keeping everybody's rent the same for one year and then going up slowly 50 bucks a pop right you're still cash flowing now and you're not doing anything to create unnecessary artificial turnover because the goal should be to get them up to market rent slowly without creating additional turnovers because those additional turnovers are going to cost you money right do i know how much they're going to be no i don't have the information on what the units look like and more importantly even if i did it wouldn't matter because that's not necessarily what they're going to look like when the tenant actually moves out out. Assuming uh, that they're pretty run down based upon the outside of the building, I, I don't see why you wouldn't be spending five to ten thousand dollars turning those over to get new seven hundred fifty dollar tenants in there. So because of that, you want to try to keep those folks in there as long as you can, right? Because what you're going to lose in not getting market rent right up front, you will gain in not having to do a renovation. So 
with all of that, I love the deal, right? Is it a perfect property? No. Does it come without risk? No, absolutely not. But, dude, it's freaking priced at $115,000. There's going to be a line of buyers trying to pick this up. So my recommendation is to go 10,000 above list price if you want a chance to take it down. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education and entertainment.